Ocean liners are usually thought of as being beautiful vessels, the height of naval architecture. They are an expression of the power and culture of a society, not only for their seaworthiness and reliability, but also their style and grace. Not all ocean liners are created equal, though. Some are utilitarian in nature, and aesthetic design is spared in the name of economic efficiency. Others just fall short in the pursuit of beauty. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the ugliest ocean liners in history. But before we do that, a quick disclaimer. Not only is this list subjective, and I want to make that very clear, but it is also not comprehensive. I did not look at every ocean liner ever constructed when coming up with this list, and I'm sure that there are many truly offensive ships out there that I have left off this list. Nearly identical or identical sister ships would not be mentioned on the list. Also, this will be controversial. Before we get started, a quick note on my schedule. Normally, I would not post a vlog series video instead of a regular full-length video. However, my personal life is very busy at the moment for a variety of reasons, and I needed to give myself a bit of a break. I was going to skip this video slot altogether, but I wanted to put something out for my audience, so a vlog is taking the place of what would otherwise be a regular video. I will be back with a full-length video on Thursday, July 8th. Okay, now let's get started with the top 10 ugliest ocean liners. Number 10, L'Atlantique. I know a lot of people love her, but to me she looks more like an old, big ferry than an ocean liner. And as a class, ferries aren't exactly known for their beauty. L'Atlantique is almost completely without sheer, which, although cheaper to build, almost precludes a ship from being beautiful, at least in the traditional sense. Her three undersized funnels only add to the boxy aesthetic, and the shape of her bridge doesn't do her any favors either. The height of her funnels was increased significantly in 1932, which did wonders for her silhouette, but unfortunately the ship caught fire and became a total loss the very next year, so this is not how she is generally remembered. If L'Atlantique was being rated as a ferry, she would undoubtedly be among the most beautiful, but she is being compared with ocean liners and is simply out of her league. Number 9. President Polk The dollar steamship line wasn't known for having the most opulent liners of the day. Servicing the less glamorous trans-Pacific routes, there wasn't as much pressure for the dollar line to build marvels of naval architecture like many of the companies operating in the Atlantic. SS President Polk, though, takes that trend to the next level. With a strangely low freeboard and comparatively towering superstructure, the ship would look top-heavy even if it wasn't for the fact that the superstructure abruptly stops both forward and aft, leaving a block of white riddled with holes topped with clutter and a funnel donning the tacky dollar line logo. In some ways, the ship previews some of the design elements of the future cruise ship industry were it not for the long bow and stern which resemble those of a container ship. Number 8. Queen Mary 2 I love Queen Mary 2 as much as the next person, but it is largely for her remarkable success in carrying the ocean liner tradition into the 21st century that I love her. Unfortunately, operating an ocean liner in the age of cheap, fast, and easy air travel requires some concessions. These concessions include a towering superstructure to contain all of the required balcony cabins and a relatively short bow to maximize usable space. I almost left Queen Mary 2 off this list because when I think of her, I do think of beauty because she exists in the context of the modern cruise ship industry, and in fact even her fleet mates fall into this class. But when compared to her true peers, the ocean liners of yesteryear, she stands out as one of the least attractive. Her designers did their best with at least a little sheer and a faux classic stern, and maybe that is simply the best that is possible in the modern era. As I always say, I'm just happy that Queen Mary 2 was built and remains in service, and I do hope that she gets a replacement when her end finally comes. Number 7. Matsonia. The reason for this ship's inclusion on the list should pop out to you right away. I like single funnel ships, but the way that the single funnel was implemented into this design is awkward. A single funnel is not inherently bad, they're common on the Great Lakes ships and I think that they work well, but in the case of Matsonia, something is off. Maybe the design or the size of the funnel needs to be different, but I'm not exactly sure. It's not only the funnel that earns Matsonia a spot on this list. 
The featureless superstructure makes the entire ship bland, while also being the maritime version of an awkward middle school teenager. Number 6. Highland Brigade This ship has no cohesion. The hull, which is fine in and of itself, looks like it is carrying an ugly building on its back and struggling to do so. A bridge was plopped somewhere forward so that the building carrier ship could be steered and any old funnels were picked out of a pile and placed wherever was most convenient. It turns out that all of this was intentional though because the Nelson line ordered five of these ships from Harland and Wolfe. Number 5. City of Paris This one is just a hodgepodge of bad design elements that combined result in an ugly ship. To name a few, size of funnel, shape of funnel, ventilators surrounding the funnel, whatever's going on with the superstructure on the main deck, and immense amounts of clutter at the bow and stern. The city of Paris is not fundamentally ugly, but her builders seemed determined to make her so. Number 4. Athenic Athenic's place on this list is probably earned because she is tantalizingly close to being an actually very attractive ship. With just a couple of design changes, the ship could have been beautiful, but alas, she is awkward and weirdly proportioned. The break in the superstructure just forward of the funnel is likely needed for loading cargo, but even just raising the superstructure island forward of the break to the same height would be a significant improvement and provide more space. It looks as though the superstructure island needed to be lowered to provide clearance for the second mast though. Connecting the island to the forward superstructure would also be a significant improvement, although I'm sure that there is a utilitarian reason for it not being connected. Finally, some adjustment to the funnel arrangement would have gone a long way. Again, I'm sure that the funnel's position serves a purpose, but it's being relocated further forward or the addition of a second funnel would help balance the ship aesthetically. Number 3. Johan van Olden Barnevelt it is clear that the designers of the ship needed a lot of space to work with. It looks like the weight of the superstructure is pushing the hull lower into the water and submerging some of her freeboard. This type of superstructure to hull proportion has been well done on other ships like Queen Elizabeth II, but this is not an example of it well done. To add to that, the strangely small funnels look like they were either stolen from another ship or that they sunk into the superstructure over time. This ship spent the last years of her life as a cruise ship, which seems appropriate. Number 2. Great Eastern The famed Great Eastern is a lot of things, but beautiful is not one of those things. She is essentially a massive, shearless, and featureless hull that doesn't know what it wants to be. She would be even worse without her masts and rigging, then she would essentially just be a huge hull with paddle wheels. But the masts look as though they couldn't carry enough sail to propel the ship against a three-knot current in a gale. The Great Eastern may well have been a marvel, but it was not because of her looks. Finally, number one, Oriana. I'm sure I've offended some people with this one. Oriana seems like one of those beloved ships that has some loyal admirers. I can see the charm of the ship and her setback bridge, but I think her look-alike fleetmate did it much better. Oriana looks like a large cargo carrier modified at the last minute with some superstructure stacked on top so as to be a passenger carrying ocean liner. The setback bridge isn't inherently bad, but on Oriana it's practically amidships. The gaping gash in the lower superstructure carved out for the lifeboats and the honeycomb stern don't help the look at all of this very strange ship. All of this adds up to a vessel which just looks like a mess, especially in contrast with her pretty sister ship, Canberra. So that's my list. Do you think I missed one of the ugliest ocean liners? Or do you have a serious contention with one of my picks? Let me know in the comments. I respond to as many comments as I can, especially in the first day or so after a video has been posted. I will be back on Thursday, July 8th with a regular Great Big Move video. Thank you for watching.